ever too late to get an epidural in labour? I'm Brooke, an obstetrics and gynaecology doctor who works regularly on the labour ward. I hear all the time from women who already know that they might like an epidural, it's not for everyone, but they're really stressed to think that it might not be available to them. In this video, I'm going to chat about some of the reasons that an epidural might be delayed or unavailable and the conversations that you can have in order to understand your options better. There is no optimal time to get an epidural, but there are a few factors that can affect whether an epidural can be safely administered during labour. Now, these include, number one, the stage of labour that you are at. So, epidurals are generally most effective when they're placed during active labour. So this is typically defined when the cervix has been dilated to more than three or four centimetres. However, if someone is experiencing very intense contractions or we've decided that they are likely to need medications such as syntocinol to increase the strength of the contractions, or if they have a medical condition that make it difficult to tolerate a, a, an epidural or make it more complicated a place, then an epidural might actually be recommended to be administered earlier. But otherwise, it generally means it's good to wait long enough that you're having contractions and you're in active labor, but not too long that your baby's about to be born. You might also feel differently when labour starts. You might feel, mm, actually, I don't need that epidural. I'm coping really well. Or you may have decided before labour that you definitely don't want an epidural, but suddenly those contractions feel a bit different than you imagined. There's no right answers and definitely there should be no guilt. You're in charge of your body, your labour and your decisions. And it's totally normal for how you feel to change when you're actually in that situation. So be kind to yourself, stay open to all of the options. A lot of people wonder if it might be too late to get that epidural inserted. Well, generally we'd be thinking about that if someone is nine or 10 centimeters dilated and their labor's progressing really fast. In general, there's no set number of centimeters that you have to be. It can be given to you even if you're nine or 10 centimeters, but it will slightly depend on the pace of the labor. So how fast the thing's changing as well as whether or not you can sit still for the epidural to be administered safely. Often when you're first told that you're fully dilated, the midwife or the doctors may allow some time or encourage you to allow some time to allow your baby's head to descend through contractions alone. So you're given an hour before you maybe start pushing. This can be a good time to have an epidural placed if you didn't have one earlier, even if you're fully dilated. But on the other hand, if you came in when you're four centimeters and then 15 minutes later, you're eight centimeters, the chances are that your baby is coming quickly. And so by the time the epidural is placed and it's effective, the baby may already have been delivered. This is more likely to happen if it's not your first baby, but it certainly has been known to happen for people's first baby. If you already know that you tend to have fast labors, but you still want to have an epidural, this is a good topic to discuss with your midwife during your pregnancy, prior to labour, to understand what stage of labour will be best for you to come in to receive that epidural in time. Again, if you know you have fast labours, having an epidural placed earlier in, la in labour is a good idea. In summary, it's never too late based on the stage of labour alone. But sometimes having an epidural placed when you're fully dilated and the baby is extremely low is not the best thing for mum and baby. Having an epidural also involves sitting up very still in this position for around 10 minutes. And this may not be the best position for a baby that's very low in the birth canal. Another thing to consider is that sometimes the position of the baby can affect whether or not the epidural is effective. You'll hear people to describe how they had a back labor. That meant they felt a lot more of the discomfort from the contractions, specifically in their back. It's more likely if you have a baby in an OP position, occiput posterior, which means that the spine of the baby is lying against your spine. And that, that can mean that and even if you have an epidural place, it doesn't take all the pain away. It's not much that can be done about this, but we often encourage you to get into different positions to help the baby to move. And it tends to improve as the labor does progress. Second reason why an epidural may not be available to you is if you have certain medical conditions. So some conditions like bleeding disorders, having a low platelet count may affect your ability to receive an epidural safely. Also issues that affect the spine, such as having had back surgery or scoliosis, or also your BMI can make it more difficult to place an epidural. If you know that this applies to you, you should ask for an appointment with an anaesthetist during your pregnancy, so prior to labor, to discuss what your options might be and how they can improve the chances that they could give you an epidural if possible. Third, the availability of the anaesthetist. Now, it may not be possible to administer an epidural if there's no anaesthetist who's available to perform the procedure. It's important to remember that, certainly in the UK, anaesthetists on the labour ward are covering emergencies as well as all of the patients that are currently in labour. So this means that although they are there, ready to place epidurals when they're requested to do so, they're also required 
to be present in operating theatres, for example, for caesarean sections, and also to attend any other emergencies that might take place on the labour ward. Often this may mean that there can be a delay in the anaesthetist attending to you when you first ask for an epidural to be placed. Rest assured that they, if they know that you want it, they will come to you when they are available. But it can be frustrating, especially if there's a prolonged emergency going on keeping them for a long time. The best thing to do if you definitely know that you want an epidural is to express your interest early on in labour. You'll often be asked to read some written information and then you can discuss the risks. They will then be able to come to you when they're ready to place it. In general, it's best to discuss pain management options with your healthcare provider early in your pregnancy and during your antenatal care so that you can make an informed decision about whether an epidural is right for you. And you can also be aware of any potential limitations or risks. Okay, so in this video, I haven't really covered the pros and cons of actually having an epidural put in, but it is a very individual decision and something that you would want to discuss with an anaesthetist. However, I have explained that certain things that might happen during labour will be occurring or will be occurring more generally on the labour ward can impact on whether or not you'll receive the epidural if you ask for it. I recognise that this information may slightly vary depending on where you are in the world. As if you receive private care, you may have a dedicated anaesthetist to you. In summary, I've explained three reasons why an epidural may be delayed or unavailable. Firstly, it can depend on how quickly your labour is progressing. Secondly, if you've got any underlying medical conditions or reasons that it might be more difficult or not recommended. And thirdly, if there's no anaesthetist available. It's important to know all the options so that you can feel empowered when it comes to going in for your labour. If you're worried, discuss these concerns with your midwife and your doctor. And always think about all the other options for pain relief that you might have at your disposal. So these can include a TENS machine, acupuncture, warm water baths, medications like paracetamol or injections like pethidine and diamorphine. So there's loads of other choices. I really hope that this information helps you to feel more empowered as you head towards labour. And I wish you a positive experience of your labour however it may turn out for you. I really hope this information helps you to feel more prepared. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, there's loads more information to prepare you for your upcoming pregnancy and labor on my channel. Subscribe for more videos like this.